Uh, recently, while up at Moonrakers, uh, Mick picked me up for one of these bad boys. Very kind of him. Yeah, any tone, four meter, eighty seven seven nine. Let's go and have a look inside the box. We get a uh, the ubiquitous manual here, which I do believe, according to Mick, we will have to read through a little bit because I've not uh, used one of these radios before. So I think you'll be amazed by the size of this thing. I know that they do a, a very small little CB radio, but let's uh, let's just take the, take the stuff out of the box, lay it on the table first. A little mounted bracket there. That gives you some idea of how small it is, isn't it? The mounting bracket there, a mic clip, and your fixings for your mounting bracket. You get a, uh, a programming cable. Wow, that's nice, isn't it? Now, do you see that normally? You don't normally see those bundled with the uh, the radio, so that's a nice little touch. I say we got these from Chris at Moonraker, who has these in stock. If you are interested, we did pay for these though. I must say that Mick bought me this one as an early birthday present. And there's the microphone, like any tone the microphone, quite a decent feel, you know, to that. You know, obviously it's budget, these are made down to a price. And I believe that is the only controls for channel up and channel down actually on the microphone itself. And sliding the radio out of the bag. The other thing some people might not like is the hard wired uh, microphone. But again, this is a budget radio, I think it was £80 uh, to us here. And it is fixed on four meters only, so you've got 66 to 88 megahertz there. And obviously, if you're using this, you need to uh, look into see what what out of that band you're legally allowed to transmit on, because it does vary from country to country, and it's outright not allowed in other countries, of course. So um, we just have the PL259 connector on the back there, which is fine at this frequency. No complaints about that, and an extension speaker bracket. Uh, the, there is a very small speaker within the unit, but I think you'll see from that that uh, it's uh, it's relatively small. So how effective that's going to be, we shall find out. So let's power this up and have a little look at the uh, the specs and perhaps get it on the test equipment to see how those specs tie up in reality. And um, me and Mick are going to do a bit of testing with this, so uh, it should be a bit of fun. Okay, that's the radio powered on. A nice orange uh, backlit display there. Looks quite reasonable. Um, you can program channel names, 188 memory slots in this. Support CD, CSS and DCS encoding and repeater shifts. Not that you'll find that many repeaters on the four meter frequencies near you, particularly if you're in the UK. There is a Parrot repeater near us, which is run by Chris from Moonraker. So we will perhaps try that, see if we can get that to talk back to us. That'll be a good test of the range from this location. Um, this radio, uh, according to the specifications, if we flip through the manual, uh, is supposed to do, I think, about 10 watts or so. Uh, we're running this on 13.8 volts. Okay, according to this, we've got three modes of uh, 15, 10 and 5 for the power and um, we've got this set on high power at the minute so we'll keep into we're going straight into the dummy load at the minute and for TX you get the little red lights at the side there and not quite why they've mimicked them on the display as well I don't know but uh, okay uh, looking at the uh, meter we've just got about 12 watts 12 and a half watts so a little bit shy but let's just crank the voltage up to 14.4 on the supply which would which would uh, simulate the voltage you would get in a car whilst driving okay now we're looking at 14.4 volts and we'll try TX again and it's still the same power so it says to me that there's a bit of uh, voltage regulation going on inside that unit so uh, but that's all I can squeeze out on the on this test here we'll check the mid and the low power ones though okay, we set it to low power you can see the little L on the display and on low power we're doing Four watts, just under four watts, just shy of four watts there. Okay, we're on the 20 watt scale, the middle scale, so that's just shy of four. So again, you know, I think it makes sense, M for mid power, and for that we're doing about nearly seven watts there. That does tie up, doesn't it? Okay, you might find you get a bit more pep out of this at either end of the uh, frequency range of course. Let's change it to high again. Now we've got our H for high power and as before it's still doing the 12 watts. So to get into the into the menus on these, I mean I'm not going to go into detail because they're really really easy to, to drive but 
push and hold the function key till it beeps and then you rotate the dials or use the up and down key to get into the menu that you want and then all of your menus a bit like on a any Chinese radio really are all in there uh, but um, if you're going to use this in any seriousness I would suggest um, putting the programming cable into it and uh, and using it that way so um, we'll test receive sensitivity then According to the specifications, it's got a sensitivity at 12 decibel sign out of less than or equal to 0.25 microvolts, which is, you know, pretty sensitive. So um, we've set this to narrow band, and let's pop the SIG Gen on. And we can see there we've got 12 decibel, 12 decibel sign out at a level of 0.23. So we're actually under the manufacturer's spec, so that's well in spec. We'll change it to wide band to see what difference that makes. Okay, in wideband we're looking at anything under 0.35. Switch the signal on, and there's our 12 dB, and we're doing 0.32 in wide. So yeah, it absolutely matches the spec, um, and you, you, you can't often say that for a lot of Chinese radios, can you? So um, in terms of uh, in terms of that, uh, I mean, I, I, I suppose uh, there are other tests one could do, such as. Obviously, channel rejection, adjacent channel rejection, and other things like that, which is where these sets always let themselves down. But um, yeah, I think uh, on first um, testing, let's just turn the uh, tone off. On first testing, that's um, that's definitely meeting everything that it says in the manual here. So you can't really argue with that. So um, haven't really got a two meter antenna, a four meter antenna up at the minute, but. I might try a quick chat with uh, Mick, who's also bought one of these himself, uh, and see if we can raise him just to do a little quick radio check before we get equipped and go out on the road and do some testing. According to the spec, we've got uh, three kilohertz of deviation. One, two, one, two, yep. Yep, there we go. 2.2 to three. One, two, one, two, test. Righty ho, there we go. That was on wide band. We stick it down to narrow band. One, two, one, two. There you go. It's a bit better. That's uh, below two. One, two, three. Testing. There we go. We stick to narrow band. I think. I'm going to um, just for an experiment, as this hobby is all about experimenting, isn't it? I'm going to pop the um, pop the two meter antenna on this uh, and see how it performs. And. Um, It'll probably be absolutely dreadful, of course, but um, we have got a four meter antenna, but um, I've got two. I've got a dipole and I've got a mobile antenna. Um, so we will get those out and about, but I just want to do a quick test. I'm intrigued. Okay, we're getting an awful SWR, three to one, but it should be all right on low power. We're not going to blow anything up. We do a, we can do a little test to see if we can uh, hear each other. we we'll keep the power down, uh, we'll be fine. Oh, we've got Mick on the other end here. Let's say we've got a terrible SWR, 3 to 1. Uh, G7LNK with G0LDB. How copy me there, Mick? We both need decent antennas set up, don't we? Yeah, Roger D, we can do that. Um, I'm sure we'll get better reception once we get uh, the correct antennas in place, Rog. But uh, it's good to know it's working, even on a, a two meter antenna, it still works all right. Obviously, at a sort of halfish wave, isn't it? But um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a good little radio. Whilst at Moonrakers, we also picked up a mobile antenna, and Chris also kindly donated a couple of 4 meter dipoles as well. So we'll test those out in the field as well as here back at base, just to let you know what the difference is between the two. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you've not already, please subscribe. In the next few days, we'll pop out and do some testing with this cute little radio. I think you'll find uh, it probably performs better than you think. Take care, and thanks for watching 73s.